Enzymes. I'm just going to go through this quickly. This has a lot to do with what I was talking about in terms of the issues associated with grain. It's also relative to human health if you want to apply it that way. There's 5,000 known enzymes in three distinct groups. We have the metabolic enzymes, which are associated with breathing, talking, walking, the immune system, metabolism, thinking, hearing, vision, all of the above. Everything but digestion, which is assembled primarily in the pancreas. And then we've got the food enzymes, which are in the foods, which initiate digestion in the mouth and the stomach. But remember, the problem with grains is they have enzyme inhibitors in it. This book here, Dr. Edward Howe, is a really good summation. He, did, he researched the research, this guy. Ended up starting the oldest um, enzyme company in the United States called National Enzyme Corporation. He lived to be about 102, died a few years ago at that age. Um, and it, it's really astounding what they found out that are associated with food enzymes, enzymes that are in food. And I'm, I'm tying this into stock only because the, the issue with grain really comes into this discussion. You get plenty of enzymes clearly on forages and forbs. This guy was a medical doctor out of uh, Los Angeles. He um, wrote many papers. He did the famous cat uh, studies, the Pottinger cat studies. He was the president of the Los Angeles Medical Association and the American Academy of Applied Nutrition. Um, and he also was a consultant for Randallay Farms out there in New York State. Well, he did these uh, uh, cat studies, and the cat studies were 10 years worth of studies from, I think it was 1930 to 40, something like that. It was also that very interesting time when a lot of this kind of research was going on. And what he found out, he basically took a benchmark of the ideal cat food, which would have been raw milk, raw meat, cod liver oil. And then he deviated from that. Then he had cooked milk, raw meat, cod liver oil, um, cooked meat, raw milk, cod liver oil, and then both cooked no cod liver oil, and then from there he went downhill. Uh, condensed milk, powdered milk, and as the food became more and more processed, what they started seeing was more and more and more metabolic disorders, and especially reproduction. And what he said was that the way this reproductive problem is increasing in the United States, uh, that the evidence he found out with the cats was that in 50 years' time, he said, we would have major fertility problems in the United States. And that was in the 1950s. And here we are with fertility clinics doing quite well, thank you very much, uh, with trying to get people pregnant. Um, the things he found out that as these animals got on these denatured foods that were devoid of enzymes, he found out that uh, mothering instincts disappeared. And within the third generation, they couldn't even reproduce. Of course, cats have a lifespan a lot shorter than humans, so it's a very good way to study the, the trend. Um, he also was able to demonstrate that the manure coming out of the cats was very, very unique batch by batch. That is to say, the animals that were uh, on the raw foods, the, the innate foods, produced manure that produced the largest quantity of experimental plotted beans and the, the animals that were on the most processed foods, the lowest quality and the lowest quantity. So it even affects what's coming out the back end, which affects the crop and the land. That's how important enzymes are because it's all related to enzymes and that's what they are. They're protein carriers. They're carriers charged with energy factors like a battery is charged with electrical energy with two metallic plates.